Okay, welcome to Lecture Online, and here's example number three. Oh, I didn't label it, so here's example number three of max win problems in calculus. And here's a very interesting and very practical example. Uh, let's say that they ask you to build the lowest cost transmission line from the power plant to the island if the cost on land is $100,000 per mile and the cost over water is $200,000 per mile. So the initial inclination might be, well, why don't you build the transmission line all the way to this point so it's close to the island and then from there to there, but you'll find out that's not necessarily the lowest cost uh, transmission line. Probably the lowest cost is when you go a certain way over land and then start crossing it over water so that the total length is not too great and therefore the total cost the smallest possible. All right, how do we do this? Step one, determine what you're trying to maximize or minimize. In this case, we're trying to minimize the cost. So we're looking for C min. All right, once we have that, we need to find an equation that describes the cost mathematically. So let's just say that the length here of the transmission line on, line on land, let's call it x. And let's call the length for the transmission line over water, let's call that length y. Well, if that's the case, then we can say that the cost is equal to the length over land times the cost per mile over land. So it would be 100,000 times x. And then the cost going over water from the land to the island, that would be 200,000 times y. So that would be the cost per mile, 200,000, times the length in miles uh, to the island, that would be y. So that would be the total cost to build that transmission line, and we want that to be a minimum. So that would be step two. Step three is, well, since we have two variables, x and y, we're going to have to eliminate one of them. We need to find some sort of constraint. So maybe we can express y in terms of x. Hmm, let's see what we can do here. If we draw a triangle here, like so, then we can say that this side squared plus this side squared equals this side squared. Now this side squared right here, this portion of that triangle, that would be 5 minus x. And then this portion of the triangle, well, we know that's equal to 2 miles, because that's the distance from the land to the island. So here we can then come up with the constraint that says that y squared is equal to 2 squared plus 5 minus x quantity squared. And so we can then solve this for maybe y, and then plug that in here to eliminate y, and then have an equation with just x. So we can say that y is equal to uh, the square root of 2 squared minus the quantity 5 minus x squared. All right, now we may want to simplify things just a little bit. Why don't we just go ahead and, oh, this should not be minus, it should be plus. Hmm, good thing that I caught that error. Um, why don't we just kind of work everything out, multiply everything out, put everything underneath the radical. So this can be written as the square root of 4 plus uh, this term squared plus this term squared uh, plus 2 times the product of these two, that would be minus 10x. Okay, and then if we combine this and that, so it's equal to the square root of x squared minus 10x plus 29. So it's probably better to write it like that. So there's our constraint. We're now going to use our constraint to eliminate y and give us a new equation with just a variable x alone. So c is equal to 10, 100,000 x plus 200,000 times y, but instead of y, we're going to write what y is equal to in terms of x, which is the quantity x squared minus 10x plus 29 to the 1 half power. And now we have an equation with just one variable x. So now we can go to the next step, which is take the derivative of this equation. All right, so then we find c prime, and we take the derivative of here, that would be 100,000, plus the derivative of this, it's 1 half times 200,000, that would be 100,000, times x squared minus 10x plus 29, to the 1 half minus 1, which is minus 1 half power, times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x minus 10. All right, so that's the derivative of our cost equation. Now, the next step is we're going to set that equation equal to zero. So for step five, set c prime equal to zero. So zero is equal to 100,000 plus 100,000 
times the quantity 2x minus 10 divided by, since that's a negative exponent, I'm going to put that on the denominator, divided by x squared minus 10x plus 29 to the now become positive 1 half power since I moved it to the denominator. All right, so since this is equal, set equal to 0, and each term has 100,000 in it, it looks like I can divide both sides of the equation by 100,000 to simplify things a little bit. So let's do that, divide both sides by 100,000. So we get 0 is equal to 1 plus 1 times this, which is 2x minus 10 divided by the quantity x squared minus 10x plus 29 to the 1 half power. All right. The final step now is to take that equation and solve it for x. So six, step six, solve for the variable x. To do that, I'm going to move the 1 to the other side. That becomes minus 1 equals 2x minus 10 over x squared minus 10x plus 29 to the 1 half power. Then the next step is I'm going to multiply this times the minus 1, but I don't like negative 1, so I'm going to take the negative and move to the other side and make it 10 minus 2x and move this up here. So I get x squared minus 10x plus 29 to the 1 half power, and I multiply both sides by negative 1, so I'll get 10 minus 2x. And then finally, I will square both sides to get rid of the radical, to get rid of the 1 half power, so square the left side, Square the right side, that gets rid of the 1 half power, so I end up with x squared minus 10x plus 29 equals this quantity squared will be 4x squared minus 40x plus 100. So it will be this term squared plus this term squared plus twice the product of these two, so the product would be minus 20x times 2 would be minus 40x. And now it looks like I will end up with a quadratic equation, but I have to kind of move everything over to one side. So I end up with 0 is equal to 4x squared minus x squared, which is 3x squared. A minus 40x, when I move the minus 10 across, that becomes plus 10x. That would be minus 30x. And we have a 100 here. Move the 29 across, that's a minus 29, so that becomes plus 10. 71. So there's our quadratic equation. We're not done yet because we need to solve for x, which means I need the quadratic formula. So I can say x is equal to minus b, which is a positive 30, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 900, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 71, all divided by twice a, which is 6, and so x is equal to 30 plus or minus, let's see, what's underneath that radical? We have uh, 12 times 71, subtract that from 900, and I get 48. So 30 plus or minus the square root of 48 divided by 6. So if I add the square root of 48 to 30, what do I get? So take the square root plus 30 divided by 6. And I get 6.15, so x equals 6.15, or x is equal to, when I subtract the square root of 48 from 30, what do we get? 48, take the square root, subtract that from 30, and divide by 6, and I get 3.85. All right, so x represented the distance that the transmission line would go over the land, and of course, the maximum distance can be five miles, so we expect probably something less than five miles. And when I look at my two possible answers, 6.15 miles definitely cannot be a possibility here. You definitely don't want to go all the way out to here and then cut across back to the island. So that's not the way you want to build it. So it looks like this is the, possible, is the most plausible answer. And um, that means that you want to build 3.85 miles across land, and then what would y equal to? Let's see here, y. Oh, let's do it like this, that may be easier. Okay, so 5 minus 3.85, so 3.85, subtract that from 5. Okay, 1.15, square that, and add that to 4. And then take the square root, 
and I get 2.3 miles. 2.3 miles. So the distance over water, y would be 2.3 miles and 3.85 miles across land. And that would be the cheapest way to build the transmission line. If that was the only thing you were concerned about, build it like that. Again, quick review. First, make a drawing, if it's not already available, to indicate what's going on in the problem. Determine what you're trying to maximize and minimize. Once you determine that, you find an equation that expresses the cost in terms of all the variables present. Unfortunately, there are two, which means you need some sort of constraint, a relationship between those variables so we can eliminate one of them. So we ended up expressing one, y, in terms of x, and we plug that in here for y. And then, at that point, you go ahead and take the derivative of that equation. Once you have the derivative, you set the derivative equal to zero to find the max or the min. In this case, we're looking for the min. You simplify this a little bit, then you solve for x. Once you solve for x, then you solve for the other variable using your constraint. And that's how you do that problem.